A visitor from space is getting a lot of attention this morning. An asteroid called QE2 is approaching Earth. The asteroid is nearly two miles wide. Derek Pitts is watching that and other big developments in space and science. He is chief astronomer and planetarium director for the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Good, Good to have you here. Tell me about this asteroid and what threat it is. Well, first of all, it passes the Earth this afternoon at about 4.59 p.m. at a distance of 3.6 million miles, 15 times the distance between Earth and the Moon. So we have a wide berth. It's about 1.7 miles wide, and that could cause some damage here, except it's so far away we don't really have much to worry about. Uh, what other things should we be thinking about when we look at the world of meteors and asteroids? What we really need to worry about are, is, the, is the, our ability to detect meteors or asteroids of this size. Uh, we can detect most of the asteroids of this size, but it's the asteroids of a slightly smaller size that we really have to be concerned with. We've already been able to detect 98% of asteroids about this size, but the smaller ones could do damage to regional areas on the planet, so we have to develop our capability to find those. So we move on to Mars? Let's go. <laughs> because we're talking about a mission to Mars, yes. and now we're hearing reports that it could be more dangerous than first thought. What are your thoughts on that? Well, the real issue that we have to consider about traveling to Mars is the amount of radiation that uh, astronauts could receive. A trip to Mars would give us about half the amount of radiation that we should normally receive in a lifetime. So that's a problem, but there are ways that we can mitigate that. We can try to protect the astronauts in the spacecraft, and then once we get to Mars, the habitats could be buried underground where a meter of dirt, just three feet of dirt, could provide adequate pen, uh, protection from cosmic rays and solar flares and solar eruptions. It's so an Dr. interesting Pitts. idea. Uh, just one second. There's an interesting idea that radiation is a cumulative thing. Yes, it is. So if you're out there for any period of time, you're just building it up, building it up, building it up. So the woolly mammoth, we yes. all grew up learning about the woolly mammoth, yes. you know, the pictures of it in That's museums, right. certainly. Though, and now there's this discovery in Russia of a full woolly mammoth, apparently with the blood still intact. So what does that mean? Here's a situation where a creature from 10,000 years ago has been frozen in ice and has been uh, exhumed, and we found that there seems to be some liquid inside that looks like blood. Mm. But the real question is, is this a viable blood product truly? It's 10,000 years, it's been frozen a long time. You know, probabilities are very low on that, but it is a tantalizing thought nonetheless. The thought that you could clone it. The thought that you could find some cells that are yeah. viable that could be used to derive some DNA for cloning. But this has been tried before, and the real difficulty is you have to be able to collect enough of a genome to do this. So it's been done with 100 genomes before, it's been done with 400 genomes, or you can find this, but you need millions of genomes to really get all the uh, oh. material you need to do that. Bummer, we were all hoping for a woolly mammoth. <laughs> Maybe a woolly mammoth on Mars or on yeah, an asteroid exactly or something right. like that. Yes. Uh, make that uh, whoever said science can't be interesting.